Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math. We've already taken a look at uh, indefinite integration. Uh, right now we're going to take a look at uh, definite integration uh, in uh, two space uh, over a function and uh, certain bounds. So basically uh, what integration, indefinite integration was, was we were finding the antiderivative of a function f and adding a constant c so that we would have uh, a function that when we uh, differentiated it, it would yield back our original function f. So definite integration is uh, integration with bounds a and b here, as you can see on top of our integral symbol that we didn't have in the last video. So the integral of f of x dx from a to b is going to be uh, the antiderivative f of x from a to b, which this symbol here just stands for f of b minus f of a. So what this yields is the area bound by the x-axis right here, the line x equals a, which would be this, the line x equals b, and f of x. So that's say this is our function right here. We have the line x equals a, x equals b, and the x-axis. Uh, typically in integration, um, the area above the x-axis is regarded as positive, and the area below the x-axis is going to be regarded as negative. Uh, and another uh, interesting bit we have about integration is that the uh, integra uh, integral of f of x dx from a to b is going to be uh, the opposite or negative, the integral of f of x dx from b to a. So um, yielding this, this area, we can take a look at a constant function and uh, find that area that is it's bounding in the x, uh, y plane. And we can go ahead and show that that's the integral. So take the constant function uh, 7, f of x equals 7. That's just a line at y equals 7. So we have the line y equals 7. And we have bounds a equals 2 and b equals 3. So this is going to section off this area here between the x-axis, the function, and the lines x equals a and x equals b. So this integral is going to give us this area here. And if we just go ahead out and, and calculate that out ourselves, it's going to be 7 times 1, which is the difference between 3 and 2. Base times height of a rectangle, it's just going to be 7. So when we go ahead and do the integration, we can see that, well, the integral of a constant is just going to be 7x. And we need to evaluate that from 3 to 2. Excuse me, from 2 to 3. That's just our new function uh, with the upper bound plugged in and our new function with the lower bound plugged in. And this is just going to be 21 minus 14, which is 7. So now we have a little more compl complicated function, sine of x. Um, I'll go ahead and draw out the graph of this so we can see the area that we're looking for. Now. Uh, sine of x is a periodic function, so if we were go to go ahead and take from sine of x, uh, the integral of sine of x from 0 to 2 pi, we would have this area plus this area. Those two areas are the same, except this is opposite because it's below the x-axis. So if we were to take this integral from 0 to 2 pi, this would simply be 0, but instead we're just looking for this area. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take the antiderivative of sine of x. Well, we know that the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. So the antiderivative of sine of x must be negative cosine of x because then when you go ahead and take the derivative, you have negative times negative sine of x, which yields positive sine of x. And we're going to get negative cosine of x from 0 to pi. And we're just going to need to go ahead and plug those in. Now, 
Now, oftentimes, a step like this is just going to be skipped out when it's easy to perform the subtraction. Um, but in this step, uh, we're just going to go ahead and write everything out for the sake of clarity. So we have cos negative cosine of pi minus negative cosine of 0, which is cosine of 0 minus cosine of pi, which is 1 minus a negative 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So you're kind of getting the picture. This area right here is 2. This is negative 2. And uh, those two functions together, uh, excuse me, not those two functions together. Uh, if we had the integral of sine of x from 0 to 2 pi, it would be just 2 minus 2, which would be 0. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, just a couple more examples. Let's uh, integrate x squared from 0 to 5. We need to use our power rule for antiderivatives here. Uh, the antiderivative of x squared is x to the 2 plus 1, which is x cubed, all over 2 plus 1, which is uh, 3. So we have 1 third x cubed from 0 to 5. Uh, all we need to do here is just plug in the 5 because we know when we're subtracting uh, f of 0, that's just going to be 0. So f of 5 is 5 cubed, 125 over 3. And in this case, the corresponding area. If this is the graph of y equals x squared, here's 5. This is the corresponding area. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at a function that we can't uh, integrate immediately. It's very difficult to deal with. Um, and you would need to take a look at our integral calculus book to uh, understand the logic behind this integral. But we can t certainly take a look at the graph of what this is and uh, try and figure out what the um, proper answer is. So the graph of um, the absolute value of x is the graphs of y equals x in the positive x direction and y equals negative x in the negative x direction. So let's say we have this is our negative 3 right here and this is our 6. So we have y equals x in this direction, so this is 6, and y equals negative x in this direction, so this is 3. Now what this integral ask us, ask, is asking us to calculate is this area plus this area. Now knowing that this is y equals negative s, x and this is y equals x, we actually could go ahead and break this into two separate integrals, one from negative 3 to 0 of negative x and 1 from 0 to 6 of positive x, but we know that it's that area, so we can just go ahead and calculate the area of those two triangles. Um, the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height, so for this side we have 1 half times 9, which is 9 halves, and for this side we have 1 half times 36, which is uh, 18. Or we can just leave it as 36 over 2 and perform the addition, 45 over 2. Again, for functions like this, uh, and there are also a multitude of other functions uh, that you can't simply uh, differentiate, um, but you could go ahead and take a look at at least the area for this function here. Um, you will encounter other functions uh, when taking an integral calculus course that are not uh, easily um, integrable, but uh, you can certainly take a look at the graph. When you're... Thank you for watching. For more math videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel here, or for additional resources, including affordable digital textbooks, please visit centerofmath.org.